real overconfidence from this team. This team know that hard work, desire, grit, and hopefully the quality that we have got at the top end of the pitch with a Bradley Dack, with a Danny Graham, with an Adam Armstrong, and Jack Payne. You know we can hurt teams, um, but every team has to be solid and try and build from a, a defensive stance. Blackburn Rovers picked up a massive away win against MK Dons to secure themselves a playoff spot. Here's the Rovers. Next up, promotion. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. This time on Easter Monday. MK Dons against Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk about that match in just one second. But if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers as we edge closer bit by bit to hopefully secure an automatic promotion. Still a long way to go yet. But we went a long way to securing that by getting through and securing a playoff spot after a 2-1 win against MK Dons. I'm ditching the hat because it makes so much noise. That's right, 2-1 winners in the end, thanks to two goals from my main man, Stretch Armstrong, and a consolation by uh, Powlett for MK Dons. The goal's coming in on the 12th minute and right on half time uh, for Stretch, and then Powlett on the 72, 72nd minute to make it a little bit more interesting, and it was a bit of a tense affair towards the back end of that match as Rovers... We'll try to secure the deal, maybe get a third. And there was chances to get a third. Oh my, oh my, he cannot get a goal, can Dominic Samuel. He was gifted with the possible golden opportunity to secure the third goal, which would have wrapped it up and probably would have opened up the floodgates for Rovers. Um, but he spooned it right at the uh, right at the death. Uh, but anyway, the less said about that, poor lad, the better. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. Uh, MK Dons actually dominated possession. This is according to the BBC website. Percent for them, 49 for Rovers. Rovers had 15 shots compared to 12 for the MK Dons. Eight shots on target for Rovers, six for the Dons, and uh, corners five, four in favour of MK Dons. Let's take a look at this starting 11s now. First and foremost, with uh, our hosts, uh, MK Dons, uh, Nicholson, Goal, Wooten, Lumington, Ebanks, Landell, Williams, Upson, Cisse, Muirhead, Britton, Pollitt, and Anike up front. There was some quality, I won't say quality, but there's some good players in that uh, MK Don side. Some of the big old units, I think Ebanks, Landell at the back, and Anike towards the top end. He's a bit of a mountain to get over, wasn't he? And uh, he had great hold up play by him, and he was, he was a thorn in the side for Rovers uh, today. But anyway, let's take a look at the Rovers in their flashy gear. Ryder in goal, Bennett, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dax, Smallwood, Armstrong, Antonson, and Graham. Now, a lot of people getting on uh, Paul Antonson's case. Yes, he didn't have the greatest game in the world, uh, but his replacement didn't do much better either. I, and I'm, I'm, every time he gets a golden opportunity, uh, Payne really just, he just frustrates me. He's just too weak on the ball. He gets pushed off of it all the time. He does have magic in his feet, but it's so few and far between that to be honest with you, and I know a lot of people want him on a permanent deal. I'm not convinced. And he's running out of time to do so. He's got seven games left to try and win me over. Uh, as does Antonson, really. He scored a few goals early doors. Um, but at the moment, I think Antonson offers... I know he, and he's, he's not the most creative and gifted. But we have that in Bradley Dack. And Armstrong, who's phenomenal. If any one of the loanees that need to be signed is Armstrong by a country mile. No other, you know, no other player that's on loan deserves to be snapped up more than Armstrong because he can score goals and he's been scoring for fun and I think he could be an ideal replacement for uh, Big DG and I know there's still a little bit of football left in DG. Um, uh, is he going to get a, given another shot next season? Uh, well, that's a big question and it's going to be answered probably in a few months time. Anyway, let's take a look at the match ratings for Blackburn. I've started at the back with the goalkeeper. Raya, he got an 8. Bennett got a 7. Downing got a 6. Mulgrew got a 6. Williams got a 6. Evans got a 6. Dak got a 7. Smallwood got a 6. Um, Armstrong got an 8. Graham got a 6. And Antonson got a 5. Yes, it's not it's not ideal, uh, the, the ratings there for these players. But to be honest with you, the first half, a lot of these numbers would be a lot higher. But we uh, we were lucky. I think, in the end, to get away with a point. Man of the match for me, David Raya between the sticks. Phenomenal save at the end, uh, uh, towards the end of that game. I think there was two or three saves that um, K 
kept us in this game. And as it stands, right now, as I'm recording this, Wigan are playing Portsmouth and they are losing. So I'm hoping that will continue. And if they uh, do have a result before the end of this recording, I will bring you up to speed. But as it stands, that result does put Blackburn Rose top of the pops. Shrewsbury, we'll talk about Shrewsbury in just a second. They did pick up a win, so they're hot on our heels. But we have played one game less than Shrewsbury. As for the MK Dons, towards the bottom end of the table. In fact, that result puts them in the drop zone into 21st place. Their better rivals set it on the same amount of points. Just one goal better, uh, and they've one played one goal less. Uh, so it's very tense at the bottom. Oldham still still hanging in there. Rochdale, games in hands on some sides above them. But they need to start picking out the results. And they need to start picking out the results right now. They did, did us a massive favour the other day against Shrewsbury. But, uh, you know, for Keith Hill's sake, I want them to keep on winning. The boy's done good. He needs to stick around. Anyway, enough about Keith Hill. Enough about other teams. Let's focus on the Rovers and uh, concentrate on this the rest of this season. Because it's going to be massive few games. I think next up... We are taking on South End at Ewood this Saturday. And I'll talk more about that game in a special, well, not special, but a preview uh, video. It'll probably be live in about 24 hours or so. So make sure you check that bad boy out. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaffer have to say shortly after the final whistle? No, I don't think so. I think we deserve to win at the end. I think, um, I think the dominance for staff was there. I think... I think Samuel should have finished the game, really, with however long it was to go, five minutes to go. Um, listen, teams are going to have a goal. They just get a goal and then their um, tails are up. they nothing to lose. They're playing man for man at the back. They're pushing extra bodies on. It's it's football. You have to deal with that. And I thought, uh, great credit to the other side of the game for us because I think for you know the first 45 minutes, we were we looked like we could score lots of goals and uh, dominated it for long spells. I think it showed the other side of the game, the putting your body on the line, making blocks, the goalkeeper making saves, um, defending with everything you've got really to see the game out. And um, so happy enough. It's just an, uh, the next game for us that we have to tick off and keep going. Yeah, that's, that's what I expect. To be honest, it's uh, and the team expects. It's it's it's. Um, we came here knowing that they're on a, in a good run of form. They'd won three and drawn one of the last four games. From I think previously that won one in 18. And so, um, you know, Dan's got them going. They've got a confidence about them, a bit of swagger, and uh, we had to try and see that off. I thought we did for staff. Second half they showed what a good team they can be and how they will take points off other teams this season. And um, and I'm sure they'll be all right because they've got some good footballers. I don't know. Listen, Kevin Friend is a Premier League referee. He should be getting them right, shouldn't he? I don't know. I think he had a. An awkward days. What's the word? The adjective for it? You know, it's, did he miss some things? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it doesn't matter to me whether they're a penalty or not now because we won two one. So um, I just, I just, as I just done there, take a big sigh sometimes with the officials at, um, and, and I'm not sure why we got a, a Premier League referee today. It seems to be sporadically happening to us. We sort of. Um, have two or three performances from officials that are unbelievable, and then we get a Premier League ref come along, and uh, he, he was all right today. Just in my opinion, he missed one or two things. Listen, they've been doing that all year. It's, it's, you know, we don't we don't just go and blow every team away that we play. It's um, football. Is football. This is a, there's a lot of good teams, a lot of good coaches in this league, and we have to uh, be respectful. The more we knew this was going to be a really difficult game because of the fact of their recent form. Um, so there's no there's no real overconfidence from this team this team know that hard work, desire, grit and hopefully the quality that we have got at the top end of the pitch with a Bradley Dack with a Danny Graham, with an Adam Armstrong and Jack Payne, you know, we can hurt teams, um, but every team has to be solid and try and build from a, a defensive stance Yeah, as, as I keep saying, it's no surprise to me, he scored 20 when I was at Coventry with him and he you know, felt like he scored every week um, Happy for Adam, really. You know, he's, he's, he psychologically must be tough for him. I think you know he, he's been at Newcastle since a baby, probably, and um, never quite happened for him there. He started this season at Bolton, never quite happened there, and yet um, he's on fire now. You know, as you see, he feels as if he can score every game, and and when you've got a Dak or a Graham, and a Jack Payne around about that, you know, we, that there's should be goals from everywhere, and um, you know we're just happy. We've got to keep going. Pleased for the supporters who made the long trip, and um, we got to look forward to the weekend now. I, listen, I, we don't talk like that in our dressing room, really. We just look after our results. We, we're not. I know I'm not. I didn't know until I just walking out here. Somebody said that Shrewsbury had won today, but um, I, I've got no interest really. What I do know is if we win every game from now to the end of the season, Shrewsbury can't catch us. And so, um, 
Wigan, it, they'll be saying the same about us. If they win every game, we can't catch them. That's that's okay. We just have to keep going and look after ourselves, and, um, and that's what we plan to do. Prepare properly, rest well now, train, um, try and pick the right team to beat South End at the weekend. Not really. Let's just try and get three points if we can at the weekend, and um, all of that sort of games building up, pressure building up. You know, when you have to win. As we feel, I think all three teams will feel as if they have to win every game now. I think, and it's unlikely that we are all, any of us are going to win every game. You know, we're going to got an opportunity now to get three more points uh, this evening. But it's good to play first to put a bit of pressure on. I think it leaves them feeling they have to perform, they have to win. Do they get a little? Do they overcommit too many men forward? As I said, every team in this league, we've just played a team who's at the bottom end of the table, looking over their shoulder, and yet they've shown how threatening and how dangerous they can be at any given stage. And so. Um, that's football, and you know, and somewhere along the line, teams are going to drop points. Ourselves, Shrewsbury, Wigan. Um, you have to keep your nerve. You have to keep trusting in the group. You have to trust in the talent you've got. You have to keep working hard and see where it takes you. Yeah, I think so. Basically, it's there's no serious damage. He's, he's got a fell awkwardly on his back. He's got a bruised lower spine. He's he's, he's fine. I think he's just uh, it was probably too delicate to sort of deal. We. Paul's obviously done very well for his all season when he played early part of the season and when he came on the other day he was rock steady so um, oh, no problem, Darren will be ready when he's ready and, and, and hopefully um, bring some of that power and drive that he brings from central defence and um, let's just keep going. Now you've heard what the gaffers have to say about the match, what did the fans and the players have to say after the match? Here is some tweets. Elliot Bennett, massive three points, faster, fantastic following today. Rovers, Mini Shearer is on fire. Well done on the brace. Adam Armstrong, Derek Williams said this. Massive three points. Thanks to the fans that came out. Hashtag BRFC. Marcus Antonson, three massive points. Thanks to the fans that travelled. On to the next one. And ex-Rover and Premier League title winner Chris Sutton said this. Superb result again for Blackburn Rovers today. Now, over on the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. Great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers just like me. But just like this guy, BB Rovers 2288 said this. One of those results you look back on at the end of the season, staying that with a biggie. And I believe it was. Had we gave up advantage, we had on Shrews already. They would have got a massive boost. But as it is, it's as you were with another game ticked off. Results more than performance here. And Thompson and Payne are not the two loans I want permanently. Armstrong definitely is. Just said that, BB Rovers 2288. Armstrong, get them snapped up. Right now, uh, there's still room for improvement. For both Antonson and Payne. Meanwhile, Hawaii, Hawaii, Howie Five O, you got me there, but Governor Howie Five O said this. I think everyone on here, on here should face the fact that it's going to be like this until the end of the season. Teams all looking to go up, stop up, going to be some real close games, and results are all that's going to matter now. As for Micah, massive relief. Can't believe we made it so hard for ourselves in the end. Mowbray made a mistake today by not bringing on Conway for Antonson, and it nearly cost us. Armstrong should have had a hat trick. Raya was absolutely immense today. Bell and, Sh and Samuel awful. I don't think they can be anywhere near the team at this stage of the season. Their lack of confidence is a problem. We can't afford when the race is on. So close and the stakes are high. The rest of the team fought like warriors today and thoroughly deserved a win. Rover the chimp. Three points but could have been could have been easier. Raya three great saves. And Thompson, Graham, Samuel all blew great chances to score. Would Percy still start Antonson rather than Payne? Not just me. 1864 Rover right. Take the win and the points. Rest up. Move on to Saturday. That's all that matters. DE. Graham Riot and Armstrong with the difference makers today. Samuel and Antonson again really poor. Downing looking a bit dodgy again as well. Looking forward to Lenehan's return. Tom. Shrewsbury win, but must be feeling gutted we held on. Another game closer with no damage done at all with regards to Shrewsbury. If we keep it up. For the few more game weeks, the end will be in sight. Next weekend, we are at home to South End, a team that did us on the first week of the season while Shrewsbury don't play in the league until the following Thursday away at Tricky Bradford. It's essential that we make sure that they start the game four points behind us with the same amount of games played. Mental block. Dally Dally said this. Awful miss by Samuel. He needs removing from the squad. And Tonson, not much better with his first half miss. Still three points better and another game out of the way. Exiled in Toronto said this. That all went wrong when Anderson was given the hook for Payne, who I'm thinking is a luxury player. Fine when teams park the bus at Ewood, but all uh, absent without lead when there is work to be done. From 
Then on, we had four players contributing nothing defensively and Williams not being bailed out. In the build-up to their goal, we were in disarray. Overrun down our left. Williams, God knows where. Mulgrew out left, not very successfully closing down the man on the ball. Leaving the mighty Downing marking two in the middle. Shambles. I actually felt sorry for Samuel with his man. He desperately needs a goal. Uh, thank God for Raya, who should be given the freedom of tock holes for two unbelievable saves. While pain, I would consign to the treacle mines for the remainder of the away fixtures. I'm glad it's not just me who sees that, you know, Payne should be a good player. He's got the skills, he's got the ability, but he's too weak on the ball and it frustrates me to no end. I know, I guess, I guess Payne is, is searching for that magic moment to get himself, you know, a step up because right now he's, he's getting left behind by the likes of Dak, Armstrong, successful loan, loan spells. Um, same with Samuel. He started off the season really well. Everyone was singing his praises. But since, I don't know when, he, obviously well, he's got eight goals to his name, but it's not been, he's not been the same since he last scored. Uh, even, even Joe Nuttall, to be honest with you, get, gets, gets the nod in, in, in place of him for me. But uh, yeah, he's, I'm, I, I hate to say this, but Payne and Samuel have got seven games or seven cameos to, to save their Rovers career. <sighs> McClarkley said this, Phew, Ryan made some good saves, but that what's the story with his kicking? In one case, he had the ball in his hands and almost kicked it straight to someone about 20 yards away. Get him on the training ground as we struggle to get the ball away. Quite often, the clearances are so poor. Aussie Dave, talk about a game of two halves. So sloppy in possession that second half, it was ridiculous. Still, we got the points, and that's all we can ask for. FGS 5635. First time in this battle, we looked ed, uh, leggy and nervous. Lucky to get away with that. Lenahan is a big miss. Hopefully, is back on Saturday. West York's Rover. Good job, Ryan was on his best form for stopping shots at least. We'll have a good keeper on our hands if he improves some other aspects of his game. Main thing is we got three points. Nine unbeaten, four straight away wins, and one defeat in 28. Not too shabby with that sort of form. A team would normally be a shoe-in for promotion, but it's just one of those seasons. I reckon it will, it will be decided until the last but one game. I hope it comes before that. Believe me, I do, because my heart can't take it. Over on the Book of Face, Callan Atkins said this. Why do we always make things difficult when we're 2-0 up at halftime? We need to kill teams off because we won't get away with it every time. Samuel should have been, should have sealed it, but he is just poop. Important win, uh, nonetheless, MK weren't bad either. Bolton were promoted, oh, no, this is Graham Jordan, Bolton were promoted automatically last year with 86 points. It just shows you that every season is different. I'm guessing at least 91 will be required this season. Anyhow, well done lads, another four, three points in the bag. Matthew Lackey said, if the next seven are like this, please help me. Fans were too spaced out today, which resulted in the atmosphere not being as good as it should be. Samuel was pathetic. We uh, got the three points, which is the main concern, but we didn't make it easy. Come on, Rovers. Seven to go. Stuart Franklin showed real character today. When it was, when it goes to 2-1, we could have capitulated, but we saw it out, and now it's down to seven cup finals. We can afford one slip-up, and we can still get promoted. Let's put that slip-up at the back of my mind. It doesn't exist. Let's forget about it. Uh, it's, there is no possibility of a slip-up. Let's get these, get these points done and get them in the bag. Frank Andrews and breathe. That second half was a ball tightener, but three points is three points. Christian Russell said this. Wow, we have some negative fans. A bunch of older guys behind me were convinced we had blown it as soon as MK Don scored. Others, in the even in the first half, are expecting us to be passing the ball around like Barcelona. The players did panic a bit in the second half, and Samuel really should have at least hit the target. But three points is three points. It will not always be pretty, but you'll get the same three points for a 5-0 as a gritty Backs to the wall job like today. On we go. And then these two guys, amongst others, on Samuel's case. Uh, Stefan McCurley. Samuel reminds me of Leon Best. Can't be asked and picks up a wage. Max Swindlehurst. Can we just leave Samuel in MK? Never seen a player less asked as he was today. So let's take a look at the round the grounds at League One. Uh, some of the fixtures were postponed due to the weather. In fact, four games were called. No, three games were called off. Uh, and, and Berry will take on Rochdale tomorrow. But as it stands, some of the big games we're looking at Shrewsbury, 
picked up a 3-2 win against Oxford to keep up the pressure at the top of the table. GB's Blackpool lost 2-1 away to Oldham. Uh, that big game, Scunthorpe against Plymouth, was one of the ones that got postponed. Peterborough kept up their playoff places uh, with a push. Uh, with a 2-0 home win against Northampton, Fleetwood continue their revivance, revivance, resurgence, perhaps, resurgence, against uh, Bristol, City, uh, Bristol Rovers, 2-0 win. And Southend spanked, that's our next guy, Southend spanked Gillingham 4-0 at home. And Charlton beat Rotherham, who are still gunning for the playoff spot themselves. And right now, halftime, it's 1-0 Pompey. Keep it going, boys. Show that Paul Cook who's boss. Also, let's take a look at some of the Blackburn Rovers players that are out on loan. Uh, in fact, there was only the one. And his name was Scotty Wharton. That's right, Scotty Wharton's at Lincoln City. And they won 1-0 away from home. Obviously, uh, MK Dons have Elliot Ward, but he was you know, forbidden. He cannot be played because they knew what would happen. He would let in 10 goals and we would have run away with it. And also, Rochdale have Sam Hart. Again, they play tomorrow. So maybe I'll give you an update on him if he plays in the preview of our next game, which is Southend United at home to Ewood Park. That video will be live tomorrow. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Another win, another three points in the coffers. But Shrewsbury, they will just not go away. And so at, as we speak, Portsmouth are still beating Wigan Athletic, but that game may change by the time I've edited this. So I will bear that in mind in regards to the tables. Um, so next up, Southend, we talked about that. But yeah, um, massive, massive win. You know, a, a guy did mention it. You can't win them all 5 0. Scrappy little 1 0s and 2 1s and all that kind of stuff do happen. And to be honest with you, if it gets us in, into, into the championship, I'll take it every stinking week. Anyway, till next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.